Zach's been asleep all morning. We, uh, if you have a cell phone, go ahead and turn that off, if you would, please. Uh, no one, no one ever means for their phones to go off in the middle of church service. So I just thought of that. Um, welcome. How is everyone? Great to have you here at Honey Lake Church. What a beautiful day it is. We love the rain, but thank God when it doesn't happen Sunday morning, right? <laughs> um, let's start off with prayer this morning. If you'll bow your head and close your eyes, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this beautiful day. And thank you so much for letting us be here at Honey Lake today. What a beautiful place, Lord Jesus. And uh, we're so thankful for it. Just Holy Spirit, right now, we just want to invite you into the room just to fill this room and that your presence be known. And something that is said today or sung today, Lord, that people will be encouraged and leave today with a, a fresh, new look on life, Lord God. And that we'll leave this building today just glorifying you and, and looking for your beauty in everything that we do. We love you so much in your precious name. Amen. What do you think the greatest day in history was? How about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? The greatest day in history. Stand with me and let's worship. Happy day. Sing with me. The greatest day in history. Death is beaten. You have rescued me. Sing it out. Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. Do you believe it? Come on. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sins away. Have a good time when I stand in that place, free at last, meeting face to face. I'm yours, Jesus, you are mine. Endless joy, perfect peace, earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. Let's celebrate, come on, He's alive. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Zach, turn on those lights for me, please. I um, want to get you to pull out your bulletin. And we've got a connect card in the back. Right in the back here. And if you would be so kind as to fill this out and put it in the offering plates for us uh, today. Even if you don't put any money in it, put the connect card in it. Please. Um, we actually do pray for you if you have any prayer requests, and uh, we want to do that for you, okay? Uh, 
Also, um, we've got a wonderful guest speaker and singer today, Kenny Munns. Won't you welcome him? Now I'm going to invite Bob Williamson to come up right now and go ahead and introduce him, Bob. <laughs> yeah, Kenny and I go way back. Before I um, get him to come up here, though, I wanted to talk to you about a little something. And one of the, the themes that, of today is regrets. Does anybody in here have any regrets? <laughs> I do, and so does Kenny. And uh, there was a guy, Frank Sinatra, wrote a song. He said, regrets, I have a few, but then again, too few. I don't know how it goes, but. <laughs> um, you know, we were not born to die. We're going to live forever. And we're either going to spend that time in hell or heaven. And when you talk about regrets, that's the way you should look at it. I've met a, a lot of empire builders, people that have spent a lifetime building empire down here and accumulated tremendous wealth. And I talked to one of them the other day, and this guy is uh, just uh, wearing himself thin. He's older, uh, probably even older than I am, and he's on a plane constantly going from deal to deal, making more and more and more and more millions and millions of dollars. And I said, what's up with that? He said, oh, it's just a way of keeping score. And I told him, uh, you know, God doesn't keep score like that. You know, he doesn't care about your portfolio. He doesn't care about, you know, anything you've built or anything unless it is kingdom work. So we need to concentrate and focus on that. And, uh, and then there are people who haven't built empires and um, they've made some mistakes in life and sometimes uh, they didn't get as far as they think they should have or, you know, it's one of those coulda, shoulda, woulda, but didn't situations and, um, and they just feel like um, the mistakes of their past and all of the regrets they have might prevent them from achieving something significant in the kingdom of God. So a friend of mine is a great evangelist. Actually, I'm going to write about this tomorrow in Words for the Day. His name is Bill Fay. He's from Naples. He's just sought after all over the world. Um, a friend of mine sent me something that he wrote that was really poignant in this regard, and I'm going to read it to you if you'll just indulge me in just a second. He says, Wow, the bravery of God in trusting us. Some think he has been unwise to choose me. I have no value. That is exactly why he chose you. As long as you think that you are of value to him, he cannot choose you because you have your own purposes to serve. But if you will allow him to take you to the end of your own self-sufficiency, he can choose you to go with him. And that will mean the fulfillment of the purposes which he doesn't discuss with you. We think because a person has natural ability, it will make a good Christian. It's a not a matter of um, our equipment, but a matter of our poverty. Not of what we bring with us, but what God puts into us. Not a matter of natural virtues, of strength of character, of knowledge or experience. God's friendship is with people who know their poverty. He can accomplish nothing with the person who, who thinks he is of use to God. As Christians, we're not here for our own purpose at all. We are here for the purpose of God, and the two are not the same. We do not know what God's compelling purpose is, but whatever happens, we must maintain our relationship with him. And then he writes, so the most important aspect of Christianity is not the work we do, but the relationship with God that we maintain. That's what our Father wants first and foremost. So um, one of my favorite writers of the Bible, he wrote much of it in prison, was the Apostle Paul. And, and he put it best in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 
Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. So, um, if you feel regrets this morning, you shouldn't because you're exactly where God put you. And I regret many of the things I did in life. I often sit around wondering what could have been if I would have um, applied myself from the young age. And, um, but I don't think that's really important. What's important is that I am where I am and that I'm serving God. And I think that we all need to do that. And Kenny Munns is a good example of that. He had tremendous talent, and you'll see that today. And uh, he, uh, he made some mistakes, and he did some things, and he's got some regrets about it. But he took his life and has dedicated it 150% for the Lord. I, I go to prison ministries with him, and generally he'll play before I come on, if we're working together. And we've led a lot of people to the Lord together, and he's led a lot of people to the Lord by himself. He's in a jail or a prison or a church somewhere all the time, not just on weekends. So I, um, I want you to listen to him and open up the eyes of your heart because uh, this guy here is going to really... Bless your soul. So come on up here, Kenny, and give him a hand. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh, you got to turn it on? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Bob. I got to tell you, out of all the friends I've got, you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you like me, my name's Kenny. If you don't, my name's Terry. And, uh, <laughs> and the first song is, is always the hardest, so if you don't mind, I'm going to start with the second one. <laughs> when we all see Jesus, we'll see. The victory Oh, sing the wondrous love of Jesus Sing His mercy and His grace In a mansion bright and blessed He'll prepare for us a place When we all get to heaven What a day Now I'm looking out here and I see some of you singing along. You know this song? How many know this song? Raise your hand. All right, help me out. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be whole. Then those pearly gates will open and we will walk the streets of gold. Come on, sing it. When we all get to hell, what a day. Well, I hope that today you see Jesus in me. That's what it's all about. I grew up in Oklahoma. I'm an Okie, and you know what they call uh, pallbearers in Oklahoma? Karaoke's. <laughs> and I went to a little uh, 
charismaniac, uh, charismatic church there in, in Oklahoma. We, uh, we were Pentecostal, and, and I learned to sing in that church. When I was a little boy, about nine years old, before we went into Sunday school, we'd, we'd all come out, all of us kids, and we'd line up right in front of the church and sing. And this lady would stand there, and she would direct us. Her name was Sister Hendricks. And we'd sing songs like this. Maybe you know Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Do the choreography, come on. Deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Then they'd turn it around, I'd get all confused. Wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. Wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never lie or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord. Yes, sir. If you're saved, then you know it's amen. If you're saved, then you know it's amen. If you're saved, then you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're saved, then you know it's amen. If you're saved, then you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved, then you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved, then you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're saved, then you know it, clap your hands. One, two, three, the devil's after me. Four, five, six, he's always throwing bricks. Seven, eight, nine, he misses every time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Well, I took those songs and I put them all together and wrote a song called The Devil's After Me. And when I wrote it, I tried to sound like Elvis Presley. <laughs> kind of looked like him, don't you think? A little bit. Here we go. Thank you very much. Here we go. Well, many years ago, when I was just a boy, singing in my little church was my favorite joy. Started out in Sunday school. When I was eight or nine, all of us up in front, standing in a line, and we'd sing one, two, three. The devil's after me. Here he comes. Four, five, six. He's always throwing bricks. Seven, eight, nine. He misses every time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we'd clap our hands while we sing our song, singing to our moms and dads. But we could do no wrong. Then when it was over, you could hear them shout, Amen. Yeah, all week long I couldn't wait to go back up again. We'd sing one, two, three, sing it with me. The devil's after me. Here he comes. Four, five, six. He's all. If you're saved, then you know it's amen. I thought so. I won't forget all the songs we sung. Wish I could go back again. When I would sing one, two, three. Come on. The devil's after me. Here he goes. Four, five, six. He's always throwing bricks. Seven, eight, nine.
Thank you. I'll never forget the first time I went into a prison. Bob and I do prison ministry together with Bill Glass and, and Jack Murph the Surf. He's been here. He's sang here and ministered here. And, and he was introducing me. And before I went up to sing, I was, I was all ready to do, you know, I'd never done prison ministry before. And I thought, well, this is a church gig, so I'm going to sing uh, the old rugged cross or something like that, you know. And he said, what are you going to sing? And I said, the old rugged cross. And he goes, no. He said, you don't want to run them off. He said, you got to do something, do, do some country music or something that they, that they would like, you know, and, and get them to come out and listen. So think of some country song that you could do. Well, I thought of the, you know, the first song I ever learned on a guitar was a Johnny Cash song. So I started off. First song I ever sang in the prison went like this. played it up. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when, but I'm stuck in poles in prison. Time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps rolling down the sin and dawn. Well, those guys like that Johnny Cash. Boy, they loved it. All of a sudden, one of them yelled out, Waylon and Willie! <laughs> Cowboys ain't easy to love. They're harder to hold. They'd rather give you a song than diamonds of gold Honk star, belt buckle Old Freddie Lee Mott Each night begins in the day Well, if you don't understand him You won't die young You'll probably just ride away Guitars and drive them on trucks. Make them be doctors and lawyers and sick. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Well, they'll never stay home and they're always alone. Even with someone they love. Thank you. Well, I, you know, after that experience, I was, all of a sudden, I was a veteran, you know, prison ministry. I could do it, man. So they led me over to this uh, basketball pavilion. There was about 200 men waiting on bleachers for me. This was in Arizona. This was a few months later. And I was pretty confident that I could do this. So I'm walking up to the microphone, you know, like, all right, bring it on. The guy's introducing me in Spanish. <laughs> now, I didn't know any songs in Spanish. And I asked him as I walked by him, and they're all clapping for me. I said, they speak English? He goes, nope. <laughs> he said, well, they, some of them speak a little bit. I said, I don't know anything in Spanish. He says, well, just do whatever you do. All of a sudden, one of them yelled out, Well, I knew some pretty fenders, so. All right. If he bring happiness, then I wish you both the best. It's your happiness that matters most of all. But if he ever breaks, your heart if the tear drops you ever start I'll be there 
before the neck yeah. drop on. They went berserk. <laughs> They were screaming and yelling, and I'm thinking, all right, I'm doing good. <laughs> then all of a sudden, it dawned on me that the next verse was in Spanish. And I didn't know it, Terry. They're all looking at me, waiting for that verse, and I'm looking at them like, mm-hmm. I just made something up. I didn't know what else to do. Injurito. Enchilada Chalupa Hot tamale Frijole Nacho Tortilla Taco Bell Jalapenos Hot as <laughs> Buenos Dias Guacamole Menudo Allow me, if you will, to do one more little funny song for you. I like seeing you laugh. You know, when I go into prisons and, and do programs, I love to see the inmates laugh. You know, they have, they're so heavy on them all the time, you know, and it's, you walk in and they're just sitting there like, what are they, they're going to tell me about Jesus again? <laughs> well, we do, but first we get them laughing and we get them feeling good. This is one of the songs that I like to do. You know, I told you I'm from Oklahoma. We used to go to family reunions, you know, to get a date. Many, many years ago when I was 23 I got married to a widow who was pretty as could be This widow had a grown-up daughter who had hair of red My father fell in love with her and soon those two were wed This made my dad my son-in-law and really changed my life. My daughter was my mother cause she was my father's wife. To complicate the matter even though it brought me joy, I soon became the father of a bouncing baby boy. That little baby then became a brother-in-law to dad That made him my uncle and it made me kinda sad Cause if he was my uncle then that also made him brother To the widow's grown-up daughter who of course was my stepmother My father's wife then had a son that kept them on the run He then became my grandchild cause he was my daughter's son my wife, she is my mother's mother, and that makes me blue. Although she is my wife, now she's my grandmother too. And if my wife is my grandmother, then I'm her grandchild. And every time I think of that, it really drives me wild. Now I have become the strangest case you ever saw, as husband of my own grandmother. I'm my own grandpa I'm my own grandpa Sing it with me I'm my own grandpa It sounds funny, I know But it really is so I'm my own grandpa All right. <laughs> I was the youngest of six children in my family, and 
My father drank. I, was, I would say he was an alcoholic, big time. And he drank mostly on the weekends because during the week he had to work hard at the, in the oil fields, Phillips 66 refinery we had in our hometown there. And, and Daddy worked hard. And he was miserable all during the week because he wanted to drink. And he knew that he couldn't drink because he'd get fired and then he couldn't raise us kids. So I was proud of my dad. But at the time, it wasn't, I wasn't too proud of him. I didn't like him because he, he, when he drank, he'd get mean. So Mama, you know, I had a drug problem ever from the get-go. Mama drugged me to church about four times a week. And, uh, but uh, I'm glad she did. But, you know, it was kind of weird going to church and having a Holy Ghost meeting, you know, and be all pumped up. And then you go home and you walk in the door and Daddy's cussing and screaming and yelling obscenities. And, you know, and it was like ding, night and day. And I knew there was something different about my family. It was just, uh, you know, I would watch... TV and watch Ozzy and Harriet and Father Knows Best and Leave It to Beaver and all them shows, family shows, and I'm thinking, how come our family can't be like that? You know, how come we don't ever sit down at a table and have a meal together and talk? Nobody wanted to be home. His daddy would be drunk, and everybody just kind of scattered. And I would, uh, you know, always wonder what was wrong with my family. <laughs> I remember on a, every Friday night when Daddy get off work, well, he got paid every two weeks, so it wasn't every Friday night, but most Friday nights when he got paid, he wouldn't come straight home because he'd stop and get something to drink before he got home or go buy some moonshine. And uh, I would be waiting to go to church. We'd have somebody come and pick us up to take us to church. And I would be looking out the screen door, and my little heart would just be beating, you know. I'd be so scared because I would hope that our ride to church came before Daddy did. And I remember looking out there and uh, out that screen door. Daddy's on the drum. Mama's on her knees. Sisters, they're all gone. Brother hunts in the tree. I'm just sitting here Wondering what to do Trying hard to watch Captain Kangaroo Where do I fit in? What do I see? Is there something wrong With my family? Maybe I'll just hide So that I won't see That there's something wrong With my family On a Friday night I'd watch the door in fear Cause I knew that soon Daddy would be here then once again It put us all through hell Where do I fit in? I can never tell Where do I fit in? What do I see? Is there something wrong With my family? Maybe I'll just hide So that I won't see That there's something wrong With my family Yeah, there's something wrong Could it be me? And I had an older sister who lived in California, and she uh, wrote a letter to me when I got out of high school. I was graduating. She said, why don't you come out here and live with us, live with me and my family, and go to college in, in California, because she knew that I was the baby of the family, and so I was the only one left, and Daddy was still drinking and still caring. She wanted to get me out of there, so... I jumped at that chance, and I said, yes, I want to come to California. Now, my daddy 
bless his heart, had gotten me a 61 Chevy Biscayne, three speed on the column, little six cylinder. And man, I was proud of that car. And I got out on the Interstate 40 heading to California, and I had all the good intentions of anybody. I was going to go to college, be a preacher, and win the world of Jesus. You know, I had all these plans, all these dreams. And I got out in the, you know, on the interstate and cranked that radio up to the sounds of the mamas and the papas. All the leaves are blue and the sky is gray. California dreaming on such a winter's day. On such a winter's day. And the Beach Boys. If everybody had an ocean across the USA, then everybody'd be served like California. All over the whole Miami, up there. Everybody's got to be surfing USA. I was excited, man. I couldn't wait to get out there, you know, and dye my hair blonde. Go out on the beach with a surfboard, and he didn't know what in the world it was, but I was anxious to get out there with all them good intentions. Now, I'm going to have time to tell you what happened out there, but I will sing you a song that says, talks about it. My life was full of dreams and visions of what I wanted me to be. Little did I know that I was wandering Farther away from reality But I had good, good intentions And I was building bricks without a straw I had good, good intentions When I went crazy on alcohol heading for a fall white lady lies led me in circles Mary Jane said it's alright so I took my dreams to Jose dark I saw the light and I had good good intentions and I was building bricks without the straw I had good good intentions when I went crazy on alcohol heading for a fall Well, when I got out there, it's true, I made some really bad choices. You know, it's all about choices, you know, and we have to make them every day. And sometimes we make good choices, sometimes we make the wrong choices. And whatever choice we make could lead us down to a harder road than, we, than God had planned for us. You know, and, and thank God for his grace and mercy when he reaches down and takes a mess and makes a message out of it, like he did in my life, you know. And, and I, I began to drink when I got out there, and I got into drugs, and it, it's a long story that I don't have time to go into of what led me to do that, but I made choices. And I think that I had some uh, different, you know, I used to say drugs and alcohol were my problem. Well, actually, I had a problem long before I drank. I needed those things. I thought I needed those things. They were solutions to me, you know, because I had some, some like Bob talked about, in his uh, devotion about me, he you know, low self-esteem, you know, coming from a poor home with an alcoholic father in a small town, you know, was kind of ashamed. I always had my head down, you know, uh, embarrassed kind of person, you know, like uh, today I hold my head up high because I'm a child of God, you know what I mean? And I know who I am in Christ. 
I don't have to be ashamed, you know. But back then, you know, I, I, I needed friends. I, I needed acceptance from you. I needed to feel belong. I needed a role model. And all of these things I needed, I needed, I needed, I thought. What I really needed was a close relationship with Jesus Christ. And I had never really fully surrendered my will. I had learned about him and when I was in that little church, you know, and uh, got saved when I was 10 years old and went down to the altar and accepted Jesus and got a Bible and went to Bible school, knew all about, you know, Jonah and the whale, Noah and the ark and all of these stories, Daniel in the lion's den. Man, I could tell you all about those things, but I really couldn't tell you much about Jesus other than he died and resurrected. But as I've grown, I've gotten to know him a lot better. And once you know him and you have a relationship with him, things are never the same, you know. Behold, in 2 Corinthians 5:17, if any man be in Christ, behold, old things have passed away, all things have become new. You're a new creation in him. about during that time when I was before I had changed you know I did some things that I really regret and I made some bad choices and those choices you know some, when, when I compare and this is where I make mistakes I compare myself to someone who's successful I compare my failures with their success and when you do that that's not good because all of a sudden you start feeling sorry for yourself and you get envious and you get jealous and you, and you start feeling worthless and, and you know, and, and, and <laughs> I'm a child of God, okay? You know, I'm a son of, of God. I'm a, uh, an heir and a joint heir with Christ. I've been delivered, you know, I'm set free. And yet I walk around sometimes like I got chains on still. And I'm learning and learning and learning that, you know what? I, okay, I made some bad choices, but you know what? God came in, and the right choice I made was to surrender to him and give him my life. And it doesn't matter about all those other choices if I make the right choice, and I give him all those other choices, and I give him all the, the mistakes that I've made and accept his forgiveness and go on because a long time I couldn't forgive myself for the things I had done, and I did some really, really rotten things. But you don't dwell on those things, you know. You did those things, are covered by the blood, and so you move on. If there's anyone here who still is held bound by those past sins or those, those mistakes that you've made, those choices that you've made, just realize that God's already forgiven you for those. If you ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. And he'll, see, he'll remember them no more. And that's what's so cool about it, you know. Yeah, I... Uh, I'm so thrilled to be invited down here, you know, it's just, a, I got, I got to tell you, it's, uh, 
this place is, is really, really something. And God's got his hand on this, uh, this whole plantation. And I'm, I'm in awe of God's blessing for me and for what he's done for my friend Bob. I'm going to close with a song that, uh, you know, God's love that, that he showed for me and his forgiveness for me just overwhelms me. And because he changed my heart, and he gave me a love for the prisoner that I never knew I would have. You know, I never thought I'd be doing prison ministry like I'm doing full time. I was on Capitol Records. I was with, you know, Brush Arbor and won awards and played in Las Vegas and Nashville and all these places. And, and yet what I do today to me is more thrilling than that ever was or ever could be. You know, it's just not the same. When you're working in God's kingdom, the glory of men is fading and it, and it doesn't last. But, but like Bob says, when you build an empire, when you build you know, heavenly an empire, that's, that's what counts. That's what makes a difference. So I go into this jail in Los Angeles. And I'm scared because this jail, I walk in. And this is a rough jail. And the pod, as I'm looking in, as I walk in, most of the time we got to go in and wake them up because they're, they're half asleep in their bunks and we got to go in and somehow arouse them. And they don't like that. And I don't like that. How would you like somebody to walk into your bedroom in the morning while you're asleep and, you know, playing the guitar? Hey, wake up, I'm here, you know. You'd want to throw them out. You know, probably would. Well, these guys weren't asleep. They were up pounding on their tables and chanting boom 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 music 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 i walk in i'm looking in that pod you know music i looked at i looked at the officer and i said uh, what's going on he says i don't know i've never seen it like this before in my life and i says i'm not going in there am i he goes he goes yeah i said well you're you're going with me aren't you and he said nope and there were blacks and whites and Asians, Hispanics, and there was even Samoans. One Samoan way in the back sitting up on a table, looked like a chief. Big bushy hair, big cheek sticking out. And he looked at me like he wanted to boil me in a pot. <laughs> I slowly walked into that pot and they started screaming and yelling, you know. I, I was standing there with my guitar, and they started screaming out songs. Hip-hop, man, do some rap. Motel, California, La Bamba. Screaming out all these different songs, and I'm standing there, you know, listening to all this, and I'm terrified. But I wasn't alone. And I whispered to God, God, are you there? <laughs> Okay, help. What do you want me to sing to these guys? Just tell them that you love them. Okay, uh, what song? No, no, God, not that song. <laughs> Can you think of something a little more cool? I mean, you know, not that song. I sang that when I was a little kid. Sunday school. These are your kids? And you want me to take them to Sunday school? Oh, okay. So, man, they're screaming and they're yelling and they're carrying on and I'm shaking. And, but I obeyed the Lord. He told me to sing this song and so I did. I just started blaring it out as loud as I could. Jesus loves me this. I know for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. And then all of a sudden I felt the, the surge of the power of the Holy Spirit. They are weak, but He is strong. 
their mouths were wide open. <laughs> you could have heard a pin drop in that pot. And I sing, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. I had my eyes closed the whole time. I was afraid to open them. But when I did, first person I saw was that big old Samoan in the back. He was singing, yeah, Jesus love me. And the other guys looked over at him and they, yes, Jesus love They started singing too, you know. Pretty soon the whole pod just kind of rocking back and forth. They had their arms locked together and they're just kind of back and forth. And I thought they're making fun of me. And maybe some of them were, but you know what? I, did, I didn't care. Because <laughs> they were having fun, you know. And I really believe that they felt loved. Do you feel loved today? Well, you should. Because God loves you. If anybody hadn't told you that, I'm telling you, I love you. God loves you today. And I told those men that. And they all sang with me. And as we sang, after I got through with that song, I sang two or three more, and several of those men came to know Jesus that day in that pot. It was a, it was a miracle day. As we sang, Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. And I wanted to put an exclamation point on the end. Yeah, Jesus loves you. For the Bible tells me so. Well, that was uh, pretty inspiring. I've been in those prisons and seen these guys, and uh, I think the most poignant moment I ever had, I was in a, a very serious prison. And sometimes you go in there, well, all the time you go in there, nobody's armed. So you're in there by yourself, and they can come up and go like that and put you out. All these guys are in there serving um, life without the possibility of parole. So no matter what they do, they can't get much worse. They may get thrown in the hole for a while, but that'd be it. So I gave my testimony. Um, I don't know if, if Terry, I mean, uh, Kenny was there first, but when I did, uh, normally they'll move me to another, uh, Kenny and I will go to another prison, and another one, and another one, and but this time we didn't move. We just stayed there and we have teammates down there that are meeting with all the guys and uh, leading them in the sinner's prayer. And uh, so I walked down there and I started talking to some guys. And one of these guys came up to me that was very similar looking to that Samoan. He was fierce looking. He, he didn't even have a neck. and. Uh, tattoos all over his face and his arms and he was very muscular he'd been pumping iron and when I walked up he looked at me and he said I want what you got he said I want Jesus Christ in my life and I said well you want me to pray with you and he said yeah and I put my hands on his arms and this guy had six tears tattooed down his face while in prison if you get a tear it's because you've murdered somebody so this man had murdered six people 
So I'm praying with him, and he asked God to forgive him for his sins, and um, he said he wanted to follow Christ and not the world. And I told him that his sins had been forgiven and that God loves him. Jesus loves him. And that just like that thief on the cross who was being executed with Christ, if he were to die today, this day, he'll be in paradise with me. And we need to make that decision in life. We give what's called an invitation. You're welcome to uh, come forward. If not, I'd ask you to, to sign a card or hang around afterwards. But I'll tell you, this guy had real tears coming down when I opened my eyes and I looked at him and his face was glowing. And you could see the change in him. Imagine real tears coming down those tattooed badges that he got for murdering something from his gang. If he was willing to do that in front of all those tough guys, we should be willing to step forward and stand up for Christ. Not only to come down here and declare it publicly. Everybody Jesus called, he called them publicly. If you don't want to do that, I respect that. When you get baptized, that's a public profession of faith. But you should speak up for Christ. Don't be ashamed of him. Somebody comes up over here to me in the lobby. I'll tell them I love Jesus Christ, just like I will on an airplane or in a restaurant or anywhere I go. And you should be the same. Because God loved you. He loved you enough to go to that cross and suffer a, a horrible death so you could live forever. Because when you die, you're not dying. You're entering eternity. And you're going to spend that time in hell or in heaven forever. And those of us who have accepted Christ, he's gone to prepare a place, a big mansion. Kenny's got one. Terry's got one. I've got one. I look forward to it. I hope you've got one. If you don't, you can have it today. So if everybody is stand, we're going to sing an invitation. If you want to come down, uh, we, we'd appreciate it. And, come forward please if you didn't come forward for the invitation I do ask you to uh, to think about it and think about eternity that's what it's all about if you've already accepted Christ I ask you to think about that we're going to take up an offering here uh, we don't expect you if you go to another church to uh, give us your tithe we uh, we, if you want to give an offering above and beyond that, we gratefully accept it. Um, you, you can't outgive God. I found that out. Um, and, and God loves us. He doesn't really need our money. He's got all the money in the world. He's got everything. He wants our obedience. So 
when you give, you should give cheerfully or not give at all. God loves a cheerful giver. And um, so if you'll bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for Kenny. We ask you to give him a safe trip home as he heads back to Arizona today. Lord, we ask you to bless the people who, who give to you this day mightily and, and bless their lives and uh, enrich them beyond the pale. And we ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Please have a seat. I'm 
Terry, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Mark Wilson. I have the pleasure of serving on the board here, and I uh, want to welcome you back again. I have some announcements that I'd like to make, and then I'm going to turn it over to Bob Williamson for, uh, for our close and for a closing prayer. Um, if this is your first time, uh, welcome today. I think Bob said it uh, better than I could, so I won't repeat that, but, but welcome to us. I um, want to wish a happy birthday to Ke Kurt Unglub. Kurt, where are you? Right back here. Kurt's a volunteer with us. It's Kurt's birthday today. And I bring that up not only because it's Kurt's birthday, but we're an all-volunteer team here. And if, if any of you are feeling led to help volunteer, uh, just see one of us or put that on the card uh, the next time. Uh, there's so many opportunities to volunteer, and that's what makes it uh, all happen. Um, also, um, uh, want to make sure you're aware, uh, Terry Warren here, our music minister, is here every single time that we have a church service. And he gave his testimony last month, and some of you said, gee, I missed it. You know, I wish I could have seen that. We get to see Terry every single time we have church service. He's here every time. Also, I want to make you aware, um, on the website, um, on the pen that we handed out, please take that with you. It's got the website there. Take two or three pens, hand them out to people. Uh, but last month's church service with Terry is already on the website. The entire service is there. But something that's brand new that's only been there a few days, we did an interview afterwards with Terry that's about 12 or 13 minutes long, I think. Uh, that's up there as well. Many of you haven't seen that. If you want to share Terry's message or if you just want to see it again, share it with your family and friends, it's there. And, um, and it's there so that you can share it uh, with other folks. Um, just a couple other things. Also, remember, we have child care. If you know anybody that wants to come to church except they, have, you know, they don't know what to do with their kids, we have uh, child care. It's uh, down uh, by the lake. Uh, there's always two or three moms there. Uh, in fact, we have six kids that are there today. So uh, bring your kids in here. That's wonderful. If you have people that would rather put uh, their children in child care, by all means, I want you to know we have that. Uh, brunch today is going to be across, just across the street at the gathering hall again from 11 uh, until 1.30. And Bob said this earlier, uh, if, if, you have, if you know people who go to a church somewhere else, but you think that they would like to come join you here for brunch, that's really the whole concept, is it's about bringing family and bringing friends um, so that we can have conversations about what we talked about today after the service. So whether it's kayaking, fishing, uh, riding the horses, that, that's really what this is all about in the afternoon session. And one thing that hit me today, before I turn it back over to Bob, is uh, Terry prayed in the opening of our service today that, that maybe it was a word or a song or something that would hit you. And, and I wish we had another two hours to go around and talk about what your moment was. But for me, I, I wanted to share this. Uh, Kenny Munns was just talking about uh, something he used to do. He used to compare himself to others. You remember that? But what he said was he compared his failures to other people's success. And as I was in the back listening to that, uh, the point there for me was sometimes other people's successes are actually further away from what Jesus wants from us than, than our failures might be. And so we talk in my family about you know, winning and playing for Jesus. And sometimes, you know, what it looks like that someone else might be successful, they might actually be further away from true success than anybody in this room might be. And I, I think that's just a story uh, that keeps coming true time and time again. So that's all we have for announcements today. I want to thank everybody again for coming. Terry, thank you. Um, on your way out, um, uh, whether you're leaving directly from church or whether you're going across uh, for lunch today, uh, Kenny Munns, uh, as he said, uh, basically travels around. He sings for Jesus, and that takes uh, donations. And Terry, um, uh, Terry may have mentioned this, but Kenny has his CDs uh, right in the back there. Uh, they're $10 each. He has two for $20. Um, sometimes uh, giving those DVDs or giving those CDs to other people is a real blessing if they didn't have an opportunity to be here today. So it's not only so that you can continue to enjoy Kenny, but maybe there's two or three other people that you think uh, would benefit from that as well. Those are right there on the table before you leave the church today. I know we're also going to have some over uh, at the brunch today as well. So if you miss them on your way out here today, feel free to do that. And Terry's, I believe there's still some left uh, that you had here from last month um, over in the gift shop as well. So those are always available, and I know that it's important. Uh, their ministries takes a lot of dollars to travel around the country and do what they do. So. I know those donations matter, too. So, Bob, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Um, well, I hope everybody had a good time. That's what going to church is about. 
I don't know why people dread it uh, when you get a great song and, and be able to feel the Spirit of God. I felt him in here today, and I hope you did too. So um, the brunch is up on the hill over here in the meeting center. Uh, we used to have it down in the pavilion, but I think they've got it over there today. And if you like, you can go there. But if not, you just hang around and walk around, feel God's presence in this beautiful, beautiful place. And um, so I ask you to bow your heads. And um, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day again. We thank you for all these that have come out to hear your word. And we ask you to bless their lives and uh, let them enjoy their day, Lord, and, and let you be the focus of their lives. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Their lives, and uh, I don't know. Uh, let them enjoy.